You just heard the update. The FAA says new evidence collected at the site and analyzed today, along with refined satellite data available today. Do you have any more details on what they found that led them to change their mind and ground these planes? Uh, we have been in touch with the FAA, NTSB, Boeing Airlines, and, and other officials. It does appear that there's new information both from the FAA teams and NTSB teams that are on the ground uh, at the Ethiopian air crash site, as well as some satellite data from one of our partners, uh, country partners, that has provided it that uh, uh, preliminarily um, connects some of the characteristics of the Ethiopian air flight with the Lion Air flight. And until we better understand that, uh, the administration determined that the safest thing to do, the appropriate thing to do, is to ensure that there's not a systemic or thematic problem here, and they've determined to ground the aircraft. Uh, Congressman, so you, you are, are you content and happy with the timeline and decision-making process of the FAA, given that they've made this decision only just in the last hour or so when other uh, aviation authorities made it yesterday or the day before? And, and I think that's a really important distinguishing factor. Um, I support what the FAA did today. I think that many of the other countries that did this prior to having any real evidence that there was a systemic problem or any true threat, uh, I think their decisions were premature. And if I had to guess, my, my guess is it would be partially based upon some of their own airlines and own uh, uh, air manufacturing companies uh, like Airbus and others uh, trying to uh, somewhat uh, create a competitive advantage for these other airlines. I don't think that those decisions were based upon fact. Congressman, there's only really two major airline makers. One is French and one is American. There is a huge list of countries from Australia to the UK to Korea and many more that don't even make planes. You're saying they did this to, to punish the U.S. and Boeing for competitive reasons? I think that there were decisions beyond just the evidence from the disasters that influenced decisions. When you start looking at some of the suppliers, it goes well beyond just being in those countries uh, where, where Airbus uh, has operations. And so I think that that possibly did influence because when you look at the evidence or the data that was out there, it did not justify the grounding until the new Although information now, was available right? today. Until the new you information was available put... today. You don't think they just put safety first and they're erring on the side of caution, listening to concerns of some flight attendants, even some, uh, even some pilots? Look, if we if we acted on emotion, if we acted on the on the the, the the feelings or emotions of flight attendants and others, then we'd all be walking everywhere. Air travel continues to be the safest form of transportation that there is in the world today. Let's keep in mind in the United States, we've had tens of thousands of flights on the 737-8s. We have flown millions of customers around the United States, and we have not had a single incident that has occurred. And so, look, I, I want to distinguish fact from fiction. Today, there is new information, new evidence that justifies potentially, out of an abundance of caution, taking another look at this. Yesterday, that did not exist. And so I think that the, the, the actions yesterday and before were premature. You can't go out there and start grounding aircraft and cause the uh, disruption in air travel and business around the United States and around the world based on emotion. You've got to have fact. Now we've got well, some evidence that potentially suggests that this decision is the right one. It's the right one. Let's take a careful look and make sure we move forward carefully. But Co Congressman, I, I totally agree. There's a, a big difference between fact and fiction, and, and you're never going to run uh, long-term successful businesses purely on emotion. But, but that is different from accusing certain countries of capitalizing on two massive tragic disasters for their own profit, which is what you just did. Look, when you look at the evidence that was available prior to today, there was nothing that justified this action. If, if you took that same standard and applied it to cars, boats, and everything else, once again, we'd be walking everywhere. And, and, and so that standard was simply not appropriate to make decisions without the appropriate evidence that justifies the decision. Didn't the CEO of Ethiopian Airlines make the connection himself on CNN? I, I'm sorry? That this, the CEO of Ethiopian Airlines made the connection himself between the two planes that went down. I, I didn't hear his statements, but I'll say it again, that the evidence that became available today is the first bit of evidence that even potentially connects the two uh, crashes that would simply justify the actions that were taken today. It's why I support what the FAA did as of today. Yesterday, I think it would have been premature. 
So, so now what? What happens next? What, what is your subcommittee going to be doing to stay in touch with Boeing, with the FAA? Are you guys going to be holding hearings? What have you got planned? Approximately one fifth of the 737 eight fleets operates in domestic airlines, United States Airlines. So we're going to be continuing to work with those airlines, working with Boeing, FAA, and NTSB to make sure that this proceeds in a manner, keeping in mind safety is first, the safety of, of passengers is, is absolutely paramount, and making sure that there is no effort to uh, uh, start flying these airplanes again until we have complete confidence. But some of the other things that we need to look at, in the Ethiopian air crash, the co-pilot uh, reportedly only had 200 flight hours. There is no airline in the United States, in fact, it would be illegal in the United States for someone with that few hours to get behind the controls or get on the flight deck of a commercial airliner. So there may be other things related to training, uh, related to the amount of air time that these pilots have in the United States compared to other countries that may be contributing factors, and we need to make sure we understand all of that before moving forward. So, Congressman, does that make it the, the airline's fault or the, the local uh, civil aviation authority's fault for, for not having strict enough uh, regulations? I, I do think that all of those things need to be taken into consideration. I'll say it again. We have flown several million passengers in the United States on those same planes, tens of thousands of flights, without any type of, of uh, situation, accident, incident like that, which does suggest that there is a difference between what we do here and other places. We need to make sure we understand that. This is very early in the investigation. We need to let the Lion Air investigation continue moving forward and, and, and extract as much evidence out of that, actionable evidence evidence and we need to continue making sure that we get all the information from the black boxes downloaded from the Ethiopian air flight and take appropriate action based upon fact. And one more thing I just want to mention congressman on your point about other countries with political motives you know there were members of your own party two prominent senators Cruz and Romney who also called for the FAA to ground these flights. I don't suppose that they were politically motivated to squash I don't have I don't have any idea competition. With I don't have any idea what their motivation was. I don't agree with them. And I'll say it again. If you apply that safety standard, our primary mode of transportation would be walking and horses.